This video was shot at Beria Christian School on the island of Buena in Chugatal. Five school children, along with their teachers and a traditional Chukis house building expert called SOM, are building a small house with local wood and thatch to demonstrate the traditional Chukis method of measuring and constructing a house. In Chuk, when we build our houses, we always begin at the center. We call this the Nugarifan, which literally means the center stone. It is our starting point and our reference point for measuring where the corner poles of the house will be located. The homeowner picks a center point and tells the soim how long he wants his house to be. All the measurements are done using arm spans called ngaf in Chukis. One arm span is enga and four is fengaf. Today, the students are building a model house that's two arm spans in length or ruangaf. Knowing the length of the house, the sewing expert can figure out the right width using a traditional ratio that varies with the social status of the house owner. For a house that's two arm spans or ruangaf in length, the width will be around engaf etirop or one and a half arm spans. Using a long piece of rope, one of the boys measures out two arm spans and he finds the middle of the rope by folding it in half and marking the midpoint of the rope. The students lay that rope over the house center point so that the midpoint of the rope is on top of the center point of the house. Then the boy who measured the house length will measure out a shorter piece of rope for the width of the house. Again, the students fold that rope in half to find and mark the midpoint. And they place the width rope's midpoint over the house center point so that the two ropes are perpendicular to each other. To ensure that the ropes along the length and with axis are truly perpendicular to each other, the team uses a traditional technique based on isosceles triangles. Three students form a rope triangle so that the base of the triangle lies along the width of the house at the center point. The student holding the apex of the triangle lets the rope slip between his fingers until it is taut. That means the two sides of the triangle are equal. The house land rope is now moved a little bit so that the end of the rope touches the apex of the triangle where the student is holding it. Now holding each of the corners of the triangle, the students rotate the triangle 180 degrees so that the apex is now at the house center point. And the midpoint of the base is now at the end of the rope, marking the length of the house. The two corners at the base of the triangle now can be used to mark the location of two of the house corner posts at one end. Then the students take the rope triangle and rotate it again 180 degrees around its apex so that the apex still lies on the house center point. But the base of the triangle now lies at the other end of the rope, defining the land axis of the house. They make sure that the midpoint of the base lies at the end of the land rope. The base corners of the triangle now can be used to locate the positions for the other two corner posts of the house. After locating the positions of four four corner posts using this rope triangle method, the students then check their work by measuring the diagonals of the rectangle form by the four corner posts. They check to make sure that the two diagonals bisect each other at the center point of the house. Now they're ready to start digging holes for the corner posts. After digging into the hard ground, 
they placed the corner post in the holes and packed heavy stones on the base of the corner post to anger the corner post so that they stand firmly in the ground. They used mangrove wood, a dense heavy wood that grows along the shorelines of many Micronesian high islands. Mangrove is prized for its ability to withstand damage by termites and wood rot. A house constructed from mangrove would last a long time. But healthy natural mangrove forests are also important in providing physical protection for the shorelines against the effects of storm waves. Mangrove forests are also valuable because they are the nursery for many varieties of marine organisms. So Micronesian communities protect their mangrove forest and to the tube a special permit is needed to harvest mangrove wood to use for building material. After ensuring that the four posts are positioned correctly at their base, using the diagonal ropes, the students and so on then check that corner posts are vertical. They make sure that the distance between the base of the corner post is the same as the distance between the tops of the corner post. Only by carefully checking the location and verticality of the four corner posts can they ensure that the house will be constructed correctly and the four house posts will form congruent rectangles at the base and at the top of the four corner post. The next step is to lay the two end beams widthwise and the two side beams lengthwise along the tops of the corner post. These four beams are fastened to the corner post using center string made from the fiber of coconut husks. Once this is done, the basic frame of the house is complete and it's time to start working on the roof. First step in constructing the roof is to find the midpoint of the end beams by using a string. Measuring the length of the end beam, folding the string in half and marking its midpoint. That locates the position for the king post which supports the end of the wrist pole that lies lengthwise along the roof line. The saw aim does this measurement on both ends of the house to locate the positions for the two king posts. Then he takes a long wrist pole and lays it across the length of the house so that it lies on the end beams at the midpoints. Now it's time to start fastening the rafters to the ridge pole. Following the same principle of starting at the center, the saw in locates the center of the ridge pole by using a piece of string to measure the ridge pole, folding the string in half, marking its midpoint, and using the mark to locate the midpoint of the ridge pole. So the first rafter to be attached to the ridge pole is the one at the center. That's an important organizing principle in Juki's house construction. And we can see that at every step in the process. We start at the center and work outwards from that point. In working out from the center, we use a technique of successive halving to locate the positions for the remaining rafters. After locating the center rafter, the saw aim measures the distance between the center rafter and the end beam where it crosses the ridge pole and finds the midpoint of that land. The second rafter is positioned there which marks the one quarter point of the ridge pole. Then the saw aim does the same thing on the other side, marking another quarter point of the ridge pole and attaching another rafter there. Finally, two more rafters are attached at the ends of the two side beams. The process of successive halving results in five rafters, one at the center, two at the quarter points, and two at the end beams. If that process were continued for another step, 
we would have nine rafters marking the two ends and the eight points along the length. This is typical of Chukis and other Micronesian measurements based on successive halving, so that three, five, or nine architectural or design elements appear, with one always marking the center and two marking the ends, and then the quarter points or eight points marked along the length. After the building team has finished attaching all the rafters on one side of the house, they do the same thing on the other side of the house. Finally, the roof framework is finished. With all the rafters attached to the wrist pole, now it's time to raise the wrist pole and place it on the king post. To do that, the students construct two Juki style forklifts. They take two pairs of long sticks and tie them together near the ends so that each one forms an X near the end. With four students holding the base of the two pairs of forklifts, they can support the two ends of the wrist pole. Lift it up and carefully hold it while the saw im and teacher place the king pose in position so that the king pose rests on the midpoint of the end beams and the two ends of the wrist pole rest on the top of the king post. The team then carefully measures the sides of the triangle formed by the rafters where they attach to the wrist pole and touch the side beams. If the two sides are the same, then the team knows their wrist pole is vertical. After checking and rechecking, and moving the top of the king post a little, they are satisfied that the king post is perpendicular to the end beam. Then they fasten all the rafters to the side beams using more coconut sand string. Now the house frame is finished and it's time to thatch the roof. Today they are using coconut thatch because Typhoon Mazak, which hit you a month earlier, damage the nipa palms and there isn't enough nipa leaves available for thatch. Nipa thatch is tougher than coconut thatch and it lasts longer, provides a better insulation against the sun's heat, so houses with nipa thatch are cooler than houses with coconut thatch. A group of men and women have been weaving the thatch while the students and their teacher and the saw im were constructing the house. The students begin fastening the thatch to the rafters using more coconut sand to tie the thatch down. This is the tedious part of house construction. It requires strong hands and adept fingers to properly tie the thatch to the rafters so they don't blow off in the wind and they keep a rain from penetrating the thatch. The students start at the eaves and gradually work upwards towards the roof, one side at a time. The first row of thatch is laid at top side facing up to keep rainwater away from the sides of the house. All the remaining rows of thatch are laid on their side facing up. Having many hands to hold the thatch and tie the sanded string makes this work go faster. When the roof frame is nearly all covered with thatched coconut fonts, a special double thatch is made by weaving two separate thatch pieces together. This goes over the false wrist pole, which is a second wrist pole that lies along the length of the roof line and helps to anchor the thatch and make the roof look even. The double thatch pieces have to be pinned in place using three or four short sharpened sticks that anchor the thatch to the false ridge. It takes an agile student to climb up on top of the roof and pin the double roof cover thatch in place. Once the last sheet of double thatch is pinned into place, the house is done 
and the team can relax under the shade of the comfortable house they have constructed. The students have learned about traditional Chukis house building and they've built a comfortable shelter where they and their classmates can relax and swap stories between classes. They've also learned that mathematics and measurement are important in Chukis culture. Without careful measurements and traditional mathematical knowledge, the students could not have built their local house properly. Yeah.